Hi. My name's Catherine, and I've been in Girls Right Now for three years now. And this is a, a piece that was inspired by a time in my life where I could only feel confusion. This piece is a raw and honest reflection of my voice and growth as an individual. This piece is titled, When I Was 14, so I hope you enjoy. My mother is a storyteller. She told me of a marriage between a man and a woman. She described the way the woman's hair had been long and raven and the way the male's eyes glittered beneath the sun in a wondrous glint. They'd married on June 19th and the dress hadn't been bought but rented. And even though she didn't own the lace fitting her figure, she adored the day nonetheless. My mother told me of a wedding where there hadn't been tin cans tied to the car. She told me of a wedding without a honeymoon. So I thought love was simple. She said my father hadn't dropped into a single knee with a declaration of love, but almost saying, it's about time we get married. It's been long enough. There were no fireworks or flying doves, and there hadn't been an orchestra playing as her soundtrack. There hadn't been anything I'd expected there to be, so I thought my ideas of love were false. When I was nine, my father told me I belonged in a kitchen. My hands dipped into a sink and my hair tied away from my face because that's where I needed to be. I couldn't reach the sink and often kneeled on a chair, my knees aching against the wood as my fingers shrunk beneath the water. I asked my father why I needed to be in the kitchen while my brothers played Nintendo. And he told me, you need to take care of the men because they take care of you. I thought of the way I cried at the sound of police sirens and how my father would bark at me to quiet down because I was too sensitive. When I was nine, I knew my father was a liar because men hadn't taken care of me but rather smothered it, uh, because men hadn't taken care of the pain I felt but rather smothered it with the idea it shouldn't be there to begin with. So I lived in a shell of insecurities, afraid to cry with the pain of being a woman in a home where a woman needs a man. I thought of the angst and absolute hatred because I couldn't blame my parents for their ignorance. I couldn't blame them for instilling images of love that didn't correspond with what I felt love should be. I couldn't blame them for neglecting my tears because I am just too sensitive. When I was 14, I hated my reality of a broken home with too many silences and separate bedrooms and the words, if you're tired of me, then leave. So I wrote. I wrote of a world I wouldn't live and of the person I couldn't be. I wrote of the boy with the black eyes and long raven hair and the way he was slowly capturing and entitling pieces of a heart that was too broken and misplaced. So I learned to enclose myself because I wouldn't allow my already fragile heart to be hurt by someone as careless and unforgivingly brutal as my father. I rejected the advances of the boy with the black eyes, even if I found myself thinking of him late into the night as I stared at the way the street light made the pavement glow. He was relentless. He drove me into a state of madness where I didn't know if what I was feeling was pain or love because I had learned they were the same thing. He called my cell phone as if we were dating and asked far too many questions I found myself loving. Then he lifted the girl that looked far too much like me in the air so effortlessly and I found myself growing tense at the sight of his hands on her body. He noticed this, noticed the way I was drunk on jealousy and the confidence drilled through him. He called me that night declaring his affection towards me. I really like you, he spoke quietly as if it were a secret. Panic surged through me in a way I couldn't describe like adrenaline had been injected into my chest. I listened to Boston by Augustana that night and amored by his charm and persistence in amored. Yet, even though he held the courage to declare his heart towards me, I only saw the possibility of love in him and I could only be terrified, so I left. I told him I couldn't allow myself to fall into a relationship. That summer when I was 14, my mother laid on my chest the broken sound of her voice betraying the strength she wore every day as she washed dishes, hands dipped into a sink and her hair tied away from her face. She cried, an image so contained, ripping apart at the seams. She told me of my father and how she could no longer force herself to love a man who didn't love her. She told me the way he'd spoken to her as if she was disposable, as if her hips hadn't carried his children and her lips grazed his own. She told me she was finding an apartment where she can be her own woman. And as I held my mother to my chest, I knew I wouldn't allow myself to become her. 
I wouldn't deny myself from becoming my own woman because of a man. I promise I wouldn't deny myself of the simplicity of life the way my mother had. So I called the boy with the black eyes, and he told me he'd miss me, and I told him I needed him because my parents were no longer together, and the kitchen was too empty and the air too still. He told me he really liked me and assured me, I'm here. I apologized and only found my heart soaring at his patience, at his compassion, and how understanding he was. When I was 14, my father told me to avoid men, and my mother told me to avoid men like my father. But when I was 14, I told myself to listen to the words written across the flesh of my heart, not the words of hearts in a broken place. Thank you.